What's going on, beautiful people? Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own super fast flash drive. And it starts with an M.2 enclosure. And M.2 refers to this form factor that looks like a stick of gum or something. But we're going to start with an SSK M.2 enclosure. The model number is SHE C325 Pro. And you'll see here that it supports NVMe drives, which are a lot faster and older SATA drives because the M.2 form factor can support either type of interface. And I went with a relatively affordable, I think it was around 40 bucks, I'll have the exact pricing and links in the description, a good old crucial uh, P3 Plus um, drive and um, it is NVMe, I made sure to get the fast one and it shows how the maximum speed this can go for if you have it in a PCI 4.0 M.2 slot. I will say that in this enclosure, the drive is going to reach nowhere near those speeds, but that's okay. Uh, it's still a lot faster than your bog standard flash drive. So I'm going to go ahead and open the NVMe enclosure. Okay, it comes with a manual. We won't need that, but if you're doing this on your own and you've never done it, you might. Here's a thermal pad that we're going to put on our drive here in a minute. It comes with some extra um, screws and standoffs, or an extra screw and standoff, which I really appreciate. We're only going to need one set of these. So I'll go ahead and get those out. Okay, and you've got this little, uh, the little brass standoff that's very common in M.2 drives, even on like a motherboard or something. And then this one here that is not um, flat is going to be what's going to secure the NVMe drive to the little motherboard of the enclosure. And then the flat one here, this is going to be to hold the enclosure together so it sits flush. So we need one set of those. I'm going to put these other ones to the side. And if you're anything like me, you have a whole stash of screws and such. One thing I really like about this enclosure is it comes with two cables. Um, we have a, a USB-C to C cable. Fairly high quality, fairly stiff. I've used my other drive extensively with both cables that it comes with and uh, the transfers have been fine and great and no problems. And then it also comes with a USB A to C cable as well. So I really appreciated that. We're in a transition still where you have devices that have either or and I like being able to have choices right out of the box. The enclosure itself, let me move my little screws over here. I'm pretty sure this is aluminum construction. It's really thin. It doesn't weigh a ton. But it does dissipate heat well. I've had my other drive banging around in my bag for months and use it on a Mac and a couple of different PCs that I deal with and some other things and uh, it's held up fine being banged around. So you basically just pull the end of this loose, like so. And here is your uh, M.2 slot that supports uh, SATA and NVMe. If you ever saw one of these that had a notch here and a notch here, which there is no notch, but if you ever saw one that did, that means it only supports SATA drives, whereas the ones with one notch over here support NVMe drives. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, um, uh, well, we have to get our um, NVMe drive out of the package. I forgot about that. So here's the drive in the enclosure. We have to put the drive in. You just make sure this notch is lined up with that notch right there. See? And you kind of tilt it up just a little bit and then push it in. Okay, and you'll know that it's in good when you can't see the pins anymore. So now we're going to take your little uh, brass 
thing with the groove in it and I'm going to put the thick side on the bottom. Okay, you can see that it, this is kind of hard to get on camera. See, there's a thicker uh, lip goes on the bottom. So I'll hook it in right here. And this part's kind of tricky. So I'm just going to push it in. And now it's pretty well, um, you know, in there good. And make sure to keep holding it down a little bit. I'm not squeezing too hard. Now we got to get the screw in from the bottom right here. And this might take me a few tries because I am not the most dexterous person in the world. There we go. I think I've got it. All of my lucky viewers out there helping me. Okay, and now it's in there uh, pretty solid. I'm going to mash it down. Okay, you'll notice it's a little bit springy. We'll have to deal with that here in a minute when we go to slide the enclosure on. So now we get our thermal pad. And I'm going to peel the back off of it. Sticky, sticky. And put it over the chips. Okay. And now, um, we're going to slide this together. And remember I said this is kind of springy. So we're going to have to push that down as we slide this so that it will uh, go. And here on the bottom, this thing adds a lot of friction, but that's okay. Okay, and um, it feels kind of uncomfortably tight. It did on my other one too, but as long as you pinch it down so the springiness is taken care of, you should be good to go. Now you just flip it over and you take the flat screw that will sit flush the totally flat headed one and screw that in right here to complete the enclosure. All right, and here you go. Uh, and you pick whichever cable you need. You can swap them in and out as much as you want. If I wanted to go USB to USB-C, I would use the C to C cable. And bada bing, bada boom, you could actually get a shorter cable. This is a little bit larger than your bog standard flash drive, but to me it's well worth it to have the speed and reliability of a full-blown NVMe. So here we are on my laptop, and I just wanted to show you the amount of RAM I have and the processor that's in the thing. So now we're going to um, plug in this new NVMe enclosure and we have to go in and, and initialize the drive. I'll go ahead and close this. We don't need to look at that anymore. Okay, so it's plugged in and nothing's going to happen until we go into uh, your right click down here on your start menu and go to disk management. It's going to pop up and say, hey, you need to do something with this. You can either do it MBR, which is the master boot record. It's the older type of formatting for a drive. Or you could do GPT, which is the GUID partition table. And what that's going to do is allow you to put in bigger drives. Um, but it really wouldn't matter that much with this particular drive because it's only 500 gigabytes. And either one of these can handle that. So um, I'm just going to go with GPT because that's generally what I use nowadays. But if you're dealing with older machines, uh, MBR would make a lot more sense. So we'll just click OK. All right, and you can see it's unallocated. So what I'm going to do is right click on it and do New Simple Volume. We're going to go Next. Just going to use the whole thing. 
And I'll give it N for NVMe. It doesn't matter what you give it though. And I'll do next. We're going to format it and I'm just going to use XFAT. Some people will have an absolute cow because NTFS is journaled and a little safer. But if you don't want to worry about permissions and it actually will read and write a little faster, go with XFAT. And we'll do a quick format. Go next and then hit finish. See, and that was super quick. There is a blue indicator light on this enclosure to let you know when it has power and when it's reading and rotten. I'm going to go ahead and close that and then close this. And let's run um, crystal disk info on it. And this should give us some information about the connection top and all. All right, and here is in drive. This is my internal drive in this laptop. It actually doesn't tell me what um, connection that it has to um, USB, but um, supposedly it's uh, 3.2. Close that. Now we're going to run Crystal Disk Mark. And I'm going to just uh, make sure that we're on in. And I already ran it for this internal drive just as a point of comparison. But we'll run it on the end drive here. And I'll click All. And this will take a little bit. I will fast forward until the end. All right, and there you see the read and write numbers. It's nowhere near the full speed that the NVMe drive in the enclosure can do. But over USB, that's not too bad. And just as a point of comparison, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a brand new USB 3. SanDisk Ultra flash drive that's 64 gigs in size. I'm actually going to be using this for a, another upcoming video. I went ahead and broke it out of its packaging just for this. So let's switch over to, uh, well, I'll close this and open it back up. Crystal disk mark. And now this should be drive D and it's about right. It's 64 gigs unformatted, so 57 formatted. And let's see what the difference is. All right, it's done. You can see this is much, much slower. So with all the speed tests done, here's how it shakes out. This is kind of the control test of the internal NVMe drive in this laptop. And you can see that it definitely got the full speed out of the one terabyte drive in the laptop. Here is our NVMe enclosure we just put together and it's nowhere near as fast as the 4800 uh, megabytes a second rating that it has. Uh, but still this is quite fast. And then for comparison's sake we have a 64 gigabyte flash drive uh, the SanDisk Ultra flash drive and uh, it's considerably slower by every measure. Now I have used um, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit with this uh, NVMe enclosure and also Rufus and I can tell you that this is so much faster than when I've done the same thing with these flash drives. Now, here's the thing. If you look at the price, if you add up the NVMe enclosure and the NVMe drive, this is quite a bit more expensive. But in my opinion, it boils down to how much speed and flexibility of capacity and endurance do you need with an NVMe drive versus an El Cheapo flash drive. 
And there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a bunch of cheap flash drives because if you lose this, it's 11 bucks. If you lose this, it's 72 bucks. And that's a lot more to lose. Um, and this is actually smaller and fits in your pocket really easy. This will fit in your pocket if you've got good size pockets. Um, but, you know, this is actually a lot more portable. So I'm not going to sit here and act like that, you know, both solutions don't need to exist. So I'll leave it up to you to decide whether it's worth it to have the more expensive option with all of the benefits over the cheap option. So if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe. It helps other people find my channel and find my content. Um, also in the comments, let me know what part of the world you're watching from. I've been absolutely blown away by how many different countries actually get my videos. I'll catch you guys in the next one and y'all have a great day.